Today, I would like to share the words of God under the subject, Holy Worship Day, the Sabbath Day. With this subject, let us take some time to study the truth of the Sabbath day in the Bible. As God's people, we need to know why worship service is required. We sinned in heaven and were cast down to this earth. So it was necessary for us to be forgiven of our sins in the relationship with God. In order for us to be forgiven of our sins, what was required was sacrifice in the Old Testament times and worship service in the New Testament times. They have the same meaning. Worship service was established for us to ask God for the forgiveness of our sins. Concerning worship services, there are the regular burnt offering service that is offered to God every day, and the Sabbath service offered weekly, and the annual feast services. All the worship services have been established in the relationship between God and us for the forgiveness of our transgressions and sins. There were sacrifices offered up to God for the forgiveness of sins, and also the sacrifices to give thanks to God for His countless favors. In the Bible, these sacrifices were described as the thank offering and the fellowship offering. These sacrifices played the role of a bridge connecting God and God's people. Today, these are called worship services. Among them, today, let us study about the Sabbath service. God said, The Sabbath is an important sign between me and you. If you keep the Sabbath, I will become your God, and you will become my people, and I will make you holy. That's why the Bible calls the Sabbath day the holy day. Some people say, we just need to believe in God. Things like commands and regulations are unnecessary to us. The reason they say that is because they don't know God's will. Let's say a king gave his royal command. When it comes to a royal command, do people have an option about whether or not they keep it? If you don't keep the king's royal command, it means you ignore and despise the king who issued the command. If you think, although you command that, I will not obey you, then you are a person who despises the king. In the same way, the reason we make efforts to follow God's commands is because God Himself gave those commands to bless us in the end, rather than because the command itself is important. Christ came to this earth 2,000 years ago to save mankind and left His will right before ascending to heaven on the Mount of Olives. Let's take a look at Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. Since Jesus told us to teach people to obey everything He commanded us, let us think about what God commanded us, what we should preach, and what should we teach people to obey. Let's go to John chapter 13, verse 15. As I have done for you. Here, whom does I refer to? Jesus. Jesus says, I have set you an example 
that you should do how? You should do as I have done for you. Simply speaking, Christ teaches us through His actions. He says, I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Then we need to find out what examples Christ set for us. In John chapter 13, Jesus said that while washing the feet of His disciples. However, the words do not only apply to the feet washing ceremony. In regard to the gospel word, if Christ showed examples to us, we should follow all His examples. Whatever Christ taught us with action, we ought to put it into practice. Then, let us find out what meaning God has put into His commandments by going to John chapter 14, verse 15. If you love me, you will do what? You will obey what I command. Nowadays, there are Christians as numerous as the sand by the seashore, and they all say, I love Jesus, I love God. Here, what did Jesus say we should do if we love Him? He said, Obey what I command. God put His love for us in His commands. He told us to obey what He commanded. Let's go to John chapter 14, verse 21. Whoever has my commands and obeys them, he is what kind of person? He is the one who loves me. It means that the one who obeys God's commands is the one who truly loves God. God says, Obey my commands, instead of only saying with your mouths, Lord, Lord, I love you, I love you, a hundred or a thousand times. It reads, Whoever has my commands and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. He who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love him and show myself to him. Verse 24. He who does not love me will not obey my teaching, will not keep God's commands. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. Then, whatever Christ commanded us is very important for our salvation. When it comes to the relationship between God and us, between God and heavenly sinners, God's commands are very important. When Christ came to this earth 2,000 years ago, He taught us how to offer sacrifices through which we can go back to the kingdom of heaven. Sacrifice refers to worship service in the New Testament times. Let's see John chapter 4, verse 1. The Pharisees heard that Jesus was gaining and baptizing more disciples than John, although in fact it was not Jesus who baptized, but His disciples. When the Lord learned of this, He left Judea and went back once more to Galilee. Now He had to go through Samaria. So He came to a town in Samaria called Sychar near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about the sixth hour. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into the town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew, and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? for Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. Here is a conversation between Jesus and a Samaritan woman in a town called Sychar. Let's go to verse 20. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, 
But you Jews claim that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus declared, Believe me, woman, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know. When it comes to worship, there is a purpose and a covenant between God and us. Jesus said that there are people who worship knowing those things, and there are people who worship without knowing those things, whether or not Sunday keeping has a promise of blessings. Let us go to Exodus chapter 31 and confirm that God made the Sabbath holy. Then the Lord said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, You must observe my what? My Sabbaths. Since God clearly told us that, we must know about the Sabbath. Observe my Sabbaths. This will be a what? will be a sign between me and you for the generations to come. So you may know that I am the Lord who makes you how? Holy. Observe the Sabbath because it is holy to you. God said that the Sabbath is holy to us. God made this known to us. God established the Sabbath service and said, that the Sabbath would be a very special and important sign between Him and us. Then, we need to know which day and what day of the week the Sabbath is. Let's go to Genesis chapter 2, verse 1. Thus, the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. By the seventh day, God had finished the work He had been doing. On which day did God complete His creation work? On the seventh day. So on the seventh day, what did He do? He rested from all His work. Since He rested, the day is called the Sabbath day. On the seventh day, He rested from all His work. And God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it He rested from all the work of creating that He had done. The Bible says that the Sabbath day is a holy day, when we can have rest and be blessed. God put these meanings on the Sabbath. What did God promise on the Sabbath day? God promised to give us blessings and make us holy on the Sabbath day. He also made the Sabbath day a sign of the everlasting rest. More than that, God made the Sabbath day a sign between God and us so that we may know that He is our God and that we are His people. Like this, God put a great emphasis on the Sabbath. Since the Sabbath is this much important, we must worship knowing about the Sabbath. First, the Sabbath day is the seventh day. Let's go to Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. The Ten Commandments are the compression of God's will toward us. Among the Ten Commandments, what is the fourth one? It is, remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Who made this command? God did. God inscribed this on the stone tablets by His finger, not by a human hand. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it, you should not do any work, neither you 
nor your son or daughter, nor your manservant or maidservant, nor your animals, nor the alien within your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord did what? The Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it how? Made it holy. The Sabbath is the seventh day in the book of Genesis. And God established that day as a holy day and made the day a sign between Him and His people. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 23. Again the word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, say to the land, you are a land that has had no rain or showers in the day of wrath. There is a conspiracy of her princes within her, like a roaring lion tearing its prey. They do what? They devour people. God is showing their spiritual state clearly. They devour people, and they also do what? They take treasures and precious things and make many widows within her. Her priests do what? Her priests do violence to my law and profane my holy things. They do not distinguish between the holy and the common. They teach that there is no difference between the unclean and the clean. And they shut their eyes to what? To the keeping of my Sabbaths, so that I am profane among them. They shut their eyes to the keeping of my Sabbaths. It means they do not look at that or care about it. And so my own people no longer honor me. God is clearly speaking His opinion against those who do not keep the Sabbath. Let's see their spiritual identity in verse 27. Her officials within her are like wolves tearing their prey. They shed blood and kill people to make unjust gain. It is written, they kill souls instead of saving them. God came to this earth and established the new covenant and allowed us to understand the regulations about the Sabbath and the Passover. It's because He wants to save our souls from death and bring us back to the kingdom of heaven, isn't it? However, religious leaders nowadays are killing people's souls like wolves, shedding their blood to make unjust gain. They shut the kingdom of heaven in people's faces. They themselves do not enter, nor will they let those enter who are trying to. Let's see verse 27 again. Her officials within her are like wolves tearing their prey. They shed blood and kill people to make unjust gain. Her prophets whitewash these deeds for them by false visions and lying divinations. They say, this is what the Sovereign Lord says, when the Lord has not spoken. They are lying to people like this. The Bible already prophesied that they would argue like that in the future. Don't you feel like God, who knows the end from the beginning, is overlooking all ages? How could the prophets know that, though they don't live in this age? Since God let them know through visions, they were able to record what would happen in our times, right? Let's go to Matthew chapter 7, verse 15. Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are who? They are ferocious wolves. Jesus tells us the identity of the wolves who are tearing their prey, the same as it is written in the book of Ezekiel. Let's go to verse 16. By their fruit you will recognize them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, 
And a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, by their fruit, you will recognize them. Jesus spoke about false prophets like this. And let's see the next verse. What does Jesus say about the sign of false prophets? Verse 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, not everyone who says to me, God, I love you, I love you, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, and in your name drive out demons and perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers, you who practice lawlessness. The Bible tells us that the law, which is not related with our salvation, is lawlessness. What is lawlessness against the Sabbath service? It is Sunday service. Which one is the worship knowing God and which one is the worship not knowing God? We should distinguish between the two. Although they claim to believe in Jesus and believe in Paul and acknowledge that Peter is a very good disciple, they don't know what kind of faith apostles Peter and Paul had. They don't know what kind of faith Jesus taught us. It is so sad. Let's go to Luke chapter 4, verse 16. He went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And on the Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue, as was his custom. And he stood up to read. The scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began by saying to them, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Here, in Luke chapter 4, verse 16, what did Jesus do every Sabbath, according to God's command? In the Gospel books, we can see Jesus kept the Sabbath day so that we can follow His example. Since Jesus kept the Sabbath, what should we do with the Sabbath as God's children? Of course, we too must keep the Sabbath. What is written in John chapter 13, verse 15? It's written, I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Jesus clearly told about the Sabbath to all mankind by saying, I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Then, some people ask, the Sabbath is the seventh day. Then what day of the week is the Sabbath? Let's go to Luke chapter 23, verse 54. It was preparation day. What day of the week is preparation day? It is Friday, a day before the Sabbath. It reads, The Sabbath was about to begin. Verse 55. The women who had come with Jesus from Galilee followed Joseph and saw the tomb and how his body was laid in it. Then they went home and prepared spices and perfumes. But they did what? They rested on the Sabbath in obedience to the commandment. Did the women who prepared spices and perfumes keep the Sabbath or not? They kept the Sabbath. Then which day is the Sabbath? It is the seventh day. Let's go to chapter 24, verse 1. After the Sabbath day, after the seventh day, which day has come? On the first day of the week. The first day, second day, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh day. And again, the first day, second day, and third, 
Fourth, let's go back to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24. On the first day of the week, in chapter 23, the women went home and rested on the Sabbath in obedience to the commandment. And the next day came. It is the first day of the week. Let's see what happened on the first day of the week. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. Verse 7. The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. What does the Gospel of Luke chapter 24 describe? It describes the third day morning when Jesus rose from death. Jesus kept the Passover and was crucified on Friday. He died on Friday. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. What day is the third day by the calendar? It is Sunday. That's why the whole world celebrates Jesus' resurrection on Sunday. Why do we not keep Resurrection Day on Monday? Or Wednesday? Why do we have to keep Resurrection Day on Sunday? It's because Jesus was resurrected on Sunday. That's why all Christians keep the Day of Resurrection on Sunday. However, ironically, what does the Bible refer to Sunday as? It is the first day of the week. Which day is the Sabbath day? It is the seventh day. The Bible shows that Sunday is the first day of the week. If the first day of the week is Sunday, can we keep the seventh day Sabbath on Sunday? No, we can't. The Bible said that the women rested on the Sabbath in obedience to the commandment. And what happened the next day? Jesus rose from death on the day after the Sabbath. Jesus was resurrected on Sunday. And the Bible describes Sunday as the first day of the week, not the seventh day. We should give more glory and praise to Heavenly Father and Mother for allowing us to keep the Sabbath as God's children. Let us be the workers of the New Covenant and the watchmen of the Gospel of the New Covenant who can lead people to keep the Sabbath, the Passover, and all the laws of the New Covenant correctly. Let me conclude today's sermon. Thank you very much.